Maxime Bernier is the face of a political revolution in Canada. For years, he's been promoting smaller government, lower taxes, and now cutting immigration. Ideas he thinks can win the next federal election. Bernier, he is a libertarian. That's a version of conservatism, which focuses on the power of the individual. It's been around for about a century. But in Canada, in the last election, the Libertarian Party only managed 0.2% of the vote. Bernier believes he can change that. He split, you may have heard, from the Conservative Party last month to launch the People's Party. And in a new abacus survey of all of the leaders, Bernier polled at 9%. So why is it growing? We'll explore that, but first, before we knew him as Maxime Bernier, party founder, we knew him as Mad Max, the maverick minister. Back in 2007, Bernier took lots of heat for the dress his Hells Angels linked girlfriend, Julie Criard, wore to his swearing in as foreign affairs minister. As the story went, when Stephen Harper's office called to scold him for her outfit, saying, that's not the kind of dress that Mrs. Harper would have worn, Bernier scoffed, telling his staff his first reaction was, exactly. Then, less than a year later, a much bigger scandal when Bernier left behind a top-secret NATO dossier at Criar's home. He had to resign as foreign affairs minister, but again, Bernier barely flinched at the criticism. For years, Bernier's been marketing himself as the principled backbencher. He narrowly lost a bid for the Conservative Party leadership to Andrew Scheer last year, and it was largely because he opposed dairy tariffs. I certainly don't owe my leadership victory to anybody in the conservative movement. Sorry, I'm just going to... a little bit... Thirsty. <laughs> Such a great moment. Cher might have been laughing at Bernier then, but not so much these days. I have come to realize over the past year that this party is too intellectually and morally corrupt to be reformed. Bernier's new party, it's got a name, it's got some money in its coffers, and a plan to run candidates in all 338 ridings in next year's election. It's yet, though, to register officially. There's no specific platform, but there is an ideology, and it's an ideology that's been sweeping the globe lately, from Trump to the Brexit vote, and Brazil to Austria. Insurgent leaders have swept to power, and they're they're often called populist movements, but they promote libertarian ideas, and they're connected to a vast influence network that's primarily funded by billionaires and corporations providing money, training, ideological support to grassroots organizations. One of the biggest of these is the Atlas Network. It was founded more than three decades ago, and it connects libertarian think tanks around the world. Bernier is not directly endorsed by Atlas. They, they, they don't do that. But he and two of his senior staff members come from think tanks partnered with Atlas. Welcome to the Atlas Network. We're your connection to a network of freedom champions across the United States and around the world in more than 80 countries. The Atlas Network supports and funds close to 500 think tanks and organizations around the world. Their goal is to win the long-term policy battles that will shape history. In Latin America, Atlas Partners are credited with helping oust governments. 2015, Argentina, an Atlas-backed think tank, morphed into a political party and unseated the left-wing government, moving many of their analysts into top government jobs. 2016, Brazil. President Dilma Rousseff was impeached after massive demonstrations and the help of Atlas-trained activists who discredited the left-wing media. They've just overthrown the first woman elected president of Brazil. This was just the beginning. The coup is going to strike, without distinction, every progressive and democratic political organization. For Atlas Network to succeed in shaping history, it needs funding, which it gets from multinational corporations like Exxon and MasterCard, and two of the world's biggest industrialists. This is David and Charles Cope. The brothers are worth billions of dollars, and they've used that fortune to help fund Atlas. Like Bernier, the Cokes are staunch libertarians, using their wealth to influence American politics for decades. They backed the Tea Party, the Citizens United case, giving corporations the right to donate millions to political parties, and the slashing of corporate taxes in the US. They reportedly own more than one million acres of the oil sands, and they challenge environmental protections. 
They also help fund some of Canada's biggest conservative think tanks, like Canada's legendary Fraser Institute. Fraser is tied to the Koch brothers in two ways, through hundreds of thousands in donations directly from the Kochs, and they support the Atlas Network. In fact, Fraser was Atlas's first partner organization in Canada. And joining me now is Maxime Bernier. Welcome. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased to be with you. So very exciting, new party. Yes, it is. But we've just come through this sort of explanation of your history and uh, connection to some very powerful groups, some American billionaires in particular, who are big libertarians. And I'm wondering, like, this movement is sweeping the world. Are you connected to that? Do you want to be the Canadian face of this global libertarian movement? <laughs> no, no, I'm not connected to that. Uh, I'm raising money for the party, like uh, using the legislation in Canada, so Canadians can give on the maximum $1,500. Uh, $1, that's the maximum. And uh, I'm able to raise money from the grassroots. Uh, that's uh, coming from uh, emails and the traditional way to uh, raise money. So uh, I don't have any link with uh, the international organization. I'm doing politics in Canada based on freedom ideas and that can be the only link. So and no contact with the Koch brothers? No, no, no contacts with them. With the Mercer family? No contact with them. You say you have no link to these American billionaires or their billions, and yet you and a big chunk of your senior team worked uh, either at the Montreal Economic Institute or at the Fraser Institute. Both are linked, they're partnered with the Atlas Network, which is largely funded by the Koch brothers, who are American libertarian billionaires. So you are, you are, Linked, are you not, <laughs> at least in thinking? I was VP at the Montreal Economic Institute uh, 13 years ago for two years. And you and said that, they, that that inspired much of your thinking. Absolutely, absolutely, and I'm proud of that. Uh, you know, I'm a free market politician. And I think I'm the only one who worked for a, a, a free uh, think tanks and like the Montreal Economic Institute. And, and yes, I learned a lot over there. And that's why I'm promoting free market policies. That's what I believe. I think we must have more competition. When you have more competition, you have better products and lower prices. But you, so you would have been helped by them. Would you not want their help, either the Koch brothers or the Atlas Network's I, help I, now? They've helped you in, I, in the past. I, I don't You're going to need a lot of help. You're trying to run 338 no, uh, candidates in the next election and you have like no machine compared to what Andrew Scheer has. You're or right. Justin Trudeau. Yeah, you're right that I don't have no machine. I'm building a party right now. The Montreal Economic Institute cannot help me to build a party and having writing association all across the country. I was speaking to a conservative strategist today who is not on your team. Maybe he will be at some point. But he was saying, yeah, it's pretty easy to raise money when you're espousing libertarian values. I will, I will add, it's easy to raise money when you're saying what you believe to Canadians. You have said that you would like to be Canada's Ron Paul. Uh, he, is, he ran to be president of the United States, but he is seen as the intellectual godfather of the Tea Party. Is I, that what you want here? Do you want a Canadian Tea Party? No, I didn't. I didn't say. I didn't say that I want to be the Ron Paul. I say I really admire, admire Ron Paul because he's an authentic politician. But you saw what happened to Ron Paul had all of these ideas that, that you espouse as well. But the Tea Party sort of got hijacked by a lot of people with bigoted points of view. Um, are, are you afraid of that? No, no, because, you know, <laughs> the advantage that I have, I'm building a party based on a program, the program that I fight for and, and I put forward during the leadership campaign for the Conservative Party of Canada a year ago. So people who want to be part of that party must share our program. If they don't share our program, they're not welcome, and they just have to create their own party. You got a lot of criticism for your comments about extreme multiculturalism, kicked yeah. off quite a debate. Um, it has become a bit of a dog whistle for people with bigoted points of view. And I know that you have spoken out about how you don't want these people in your party. You're trying to get them off your, your social media. But I, but I do wonder uh, if you've noticed that uh, rebel media, for example, does seem to be fond of you. It's been accused, of course, of being supportive of white supremacist views. Ezra Levant, they have a million subscribers on YouTube, mm. 150,000 followers on, on, uh, on Facebook. Do, do you want his support? Do you want his audience? 
You know, I want people who believe in our ideas, and it can be people who, who are watching this show right now, people who are watching the Ezra Levit and the Rebel, Rebel. It can be people who are watching Radio Canada. So people who believe like, it. Andrew Shear won't go on his show anymore yeah. after what happened in Charlottesville. Yeah, 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 it was seen yeah. as being promoting racist yeah. ideals. Yeah. Or, you don't have a problem with that. I didn't receive any invitation to go on this show, and if I received, well, if I received it, I will, I will think about it. Uh, you know, <laughs> I want to reach Canadians who believe in our ideas and use all the platform available to do that. I'm using social media, I'm using Facebook, I'm using Twitter. It's all the same ideas, but speaking, uh, speaking to Canadians that are, I'm, I'm with you today, and I'm speaking to your people at home right now, and I want to have the opportunity to reach more Canadians. You know, we're at 10% in the pool right now, a new party. My goal is to grow that and to be the alternative of the, for the Trudeau government. So you've said that Canadians want authenticity yes. uh, and they want to have some debates about some of, of these issues. Let's take health care. You've said yes. there should be more private health care. Yes. How far, how far do you want to go? I want to decide that. That's a provincial jurisdiction. What I'm saying... But don't you have to have a position? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you my position right now. Which is? Which is the federal government is taxing Canadians. And after that, we use that money to transfer that to provinces. Health care, it's a 100% provincial jurisdiction. So you have no problem if, if the provinces want to provide more private health care? That would be their decision. But that you'd be fine with that? For sure. Like all the other countries. And do you think that would be better to have two be, tiers? For sure, yeah. that would be more. The, the Canadian would choose. It's like Is that it, what Canadians want? Because that's, yeah. like, that's a big change. No, that's not a big change. It's supposed In to be Europe, this... This we have private delivery right now, but I won't decide that. It's not my jurisdiction. I will just lower my taxes, and provinces will find the right way to be efficient. Because but in they many will, company, because in, they will be responsible at the end. But in many countries, when you have two-tier health care, the waiting lists get longer, except for no, rich, no, except for rich people. That's not true. That's not true. If you look at the data, if you look at Sweden, if in, in UK, they have mixed system, and they don't have this, uh, this problem. So you have a year before the election. Will you be ready? Yeah, for sure, I will. How long until you register the party? A couple of weeks from now. Okay. Lovely to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it.